Today on Upfront, a new investigation of an old agency. Leaders in the state Senate call on the Attorney General to investigate the former Government Accountability Board. I'll ask AG Brad Schimmel about his next move today on Upfront. Plus, why the Elections Commission Chairman says Schimmel can't be trusted to conduct an objective probe. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. Top Republican state senators are calling for an investigation into Wisconsin's former ethics and election agency. They're also calling for the resignation of two state employees who used to work for it. Last week, Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald and two other Republican Senate leaders voted to authorize Attorney General Brad Schimmel to investigate the former Government Accountability Board, which conducted probes of Governor Walker and other conservatives. Additionally, Fitzgerald and Assembly Speaker Robin Voss have called for two former GAB employees who now work for the new Elections and Ethics Commissions to resign or face removal. Later in our program, we'll talk with the Democratic chairman of the State Elections Commission, who is accusing Republicans of character assassinations of public servants. But we begin with Attorney General Brad Schimmel, whose recent report on the leak of John Doe documents has set off a new flurry of developments related to past investigations of Republican lawmakers, individuals, and organizations. Welcome back to Upfront, Mr. Attorney General. Thank you, Mike. So let's talk about uh, what the Senate has asked you to do, and that is to investigate the former Government Accountability Board. Why do we need right. to do that? Well, the investigation we completed a couple of weeks ago uh, was solely looking at trying to identify the source of the leak to the Guardian newspaper. Of the John Doe yeah. documents. Yes. So we didn't look at everything. We looked at what was necessary to follow through on trying to identify the person who caused that leak. Um, this would be a more expansive look into whether there were other illegal activities going on. And with the direction from the Senate, we're happy to do that. We're, at, we're asked to do it, and we will. Based on what you have seen so far, do you think there is reason to pursue this investigation? Clearly, you must. We do think there's the potential that there was other criminal activity besides just the leak, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. We're not going to talk, just like with the leak, we're not going to talk about the investigation. And that frustrated a lot of people on both sides. They wanted to know, what are you doing? Are you doing anything? What have you learned? And we just kept our mouth shut and did the investigation, and we'll do that again. Well, what concerns you most about the, the findings of the John Doe investigation uh, well, that preceded this investigation? Well, there were really three takeaways from, from the report that I think are most remarkable. One is the scope of what was happening. Even those who were objecting very loudly to the, to the John Doe process had no idea just how far it went. Another thing that was very troubling was that they were collecting information that was purely personal and retaining it. I can understand how in executing a search warrant, especially when you're looking at computers or getting search warrants to look at someone's email accounts, you can end up with a lot of material that doesn't relate to your investigation. Mm -hmm. we, that happens all the time, like in a child pornography investigation. You're looking at the computer, lots of things that don't have anything to do with your investigation. You don't collect those. You don't retain them. We found not only did they collect and retain them, but they categorized them um, and then put them in folders that they labeled opposition research and created that way. That's troubling. And then finally, the third takeaway was just there was certainly an air of partisanship going on there. When you saw the objections from the GAB staff attorneys, when even the DA and the special prosecutor started to say, wait a minute, we might be going too far here, and the GAB staff just object, fe objected fiercely to that. And then when the judge issued the order to stop looking at these materials, they defied that order. So you mentioned the word partisanship, and let me have you respond to what's being said uh, about your investigation. So mm -hmm. um, your agency will investigate the, the former GAB, but Mark Thompson, the chair of the State Elections Commission, the new Elections Commission, which replaced the GAB, he's a Democrat, we should say, uh, sent a letter to top Republican senators, and he said, and I'm quoting now, my concern about the ability of the Attorney General to conduct an objective and complete investigation is based on the one-sided and incomplete nature of his report so far. He goes on to say that the uh, Attorney General relies on incorrect assumptions and flawed logic to paint the GAB investigative activities in the worst possible light. Those are pretty strong words. What's your response to well, that? Well, that's all they can do is distract from the substance of the report. 
by claiming that it's political or it's one-sided. The report is what it is. We collected the information. We've reported what witnesses told us. We reported what we found in the documents we looked at. And we, we hit it down the fairway. That is what happened. And it's for the public to decide um, whether the Ethics Commission was, or excuse me, the GAB was too partisan or not. That's their determination to make. We reported what we found in the emails. Tony Evers, the Democratic candidate for governor, says this is political retaliation. A spokesperson for Dana Walks, another Democratic candidate, called it a partisan hit piece. The Capital Times, a newspaper in Madison, says you should resign because you're too partisan. Well, with all due respect to the Capital Times, I haven't given their demand much serious consideration. Mm. But uh, in terms of, you know, Superintendent Evers has suddenly gotten very political because he's running for governor himself. So everything now has become a political fight for him. We, we investigated and we've reported what we found. That's what we did. Um, they don't like that what's happened has been exposed, but we've simply shed the light of day on what was going on. Uh, let me ask you uh, one more question about this. Um, again, this, this charge that, that it seems like to some Democrats in particular, you're settling political scores. And I, and I want to ask you about the Dan Bice reference in, in the report. So Dan Bice is a reporter, well-known reporter for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Well, he's written a couple of stories that weren't terribly flattering to your office. And in the report, you suggest that Dan Bice's wife, Sonia, who once worked for a Supreme Court justice in Madison, was tipping off the newspaper uh, to visits by investigators. That turned out to be completely untrue. Well, that's How, how does that happen? Does it diminish the, way, the credibility of the report? The way that's characterized exaggerates what was in the report. In the report, there was a footnote. I read the footnote. That simply identified that um, Sonia Bice had worked in, those, in those, uh, that same office space. Not at the and time she, of the visits, though. Well, we reported what was told to us by a witness. And that whether she worked there at the time of the visits or not, we didn't say she's the source of the leak to the newspaper. You don't think that was implied the in concern, that footnote? The concern we have, and the reason why we put the footnote in, is just to expose that there were poor security measures even at the clerk of the Supreme Court's office. There were problems there. Boxes were not stored in a secure way containing this evidence. That was troubling. We, the, even after the Supreme Court shut this down finally and made clear that these, these materials have to remain confidential even in their own clerk's office there were some problems with security. In retrospect was it a mistake to include that in the original report? Well we reported what was there. It wasn't central to our report so when, um, when the Journal Sentinel reported to us that they, they could confirm that she didn't work there at that time then we we simply advise the judge disregard that footnote because it wasn't central to what we were reporting. I want to take a quick break. We'll continue talking about this topic and other things when we come back. My interview with Attorney General Brad Schimmel will continue in a moment. And we'll also talk about why his office says a lawsuit over an Eau Claire economic development project could imperil Foxconn. We'll continue on Upfront in a moment. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.